a wee bit of metal shavings in my boxers. There's the wee grey faggy. There you go. And it's only meant to be 10 hours to build a fent apparently, and the status was pending parts. Got a wee party of cows following me this morning. Good morning, Holly. There we are, we can What a be? That's all already done. Ah, you yeah, bad Yeah, we're stuck. It's got a big old patch of grass. This thing goes like the clappers and it cuts no bother. Job done. Good job. Right, good morning. I'm just out in the field of barley at the moment, having a wee look at it. Looking top notch. Needs a bit of rain though. This crop of barley's been out of the ground probably now a week and a half or so, I'd say. Still plenty of fertilizer kicking about. We've not had much rain. We could really do with a, a blast of rain just to soak that in. Missed a video yesterday because QMS Quality Meet Scotland were doing some filming on Sunday for PR stuff so I never actually did anything on Sunday. So that was why there was no video yesterday. Back in action today though. The trough's down here because I was trying to get the sheep in a certain place so they could film them. It's quite funny, they were wanting a bit on lambing and lambing season. So yeah, well, our two ewes and five lambs doing absolutely smashing but I wouldn't call it a season. Go on then, wire in. Just shifted to yard three because we're needing to shift a forklift about and also pull some posts out because the contractor is coming in today and to sow some grass. Look at that. Beautiful. I've still got a top wire to put on a, a few bits, but you can see it's lying there. Still need to string that up and need uh, we need the plastic covering because that's going to be an electric top wire. Smash and this is where the coos are going to go. Just taking out all these posts that were set up to keep horses in. There's cows going in now, so. Take them all out again. Right, we've got one pallet of post done. There's another pallet full worth. Oh, that's just lovely. Made a good job of that. Lula's found the first hole. <laughs> this field could do with a roll. It's not too even, but it's so dry and hard at the moment. Won't really do too much. Could do with it being a wee bit more moisture in the ground, so it's a bit softer and it, it moves when the roller hits it. You can see there's a hole there. We should really come and fill that in with soil. We need to come and fill that in with soil, and then we can take away these bits of wood. But they filled it in with wood for now. Same up here. There's a wee bit there. That's where the sheep used to come through. You can see them where they tracked all the way through. That's all the posts done now. I'm um, just in time because the drills just arrived to come and put some new grass into this. There goes the boy with his drill. So all that machine is, is a set of discs that are offset at a fraction of an angle to the direction of travel. So if you imagine this as a disc and you're traveling that direction, it's just offset very fractionally, goes into the ground. It just cuts a tiny wee slit in the ground, opens it fractionally and allows the seed to drop in. And then because the ground's not torn or anything, it then folds back in on itself and that's the seed buried. There you go, you can see where the drill's been. It just cuts a wee slot and the seed is somewhere in there. But it's shut real close, you can't really open it up. The disc just sits at an angle, cuts it a wee bit, drops in the seed and then it closes up again. I'm just going to shift this forklift to yard number three where Kev's going to spread some fur on some winter barley. And then we're also going to put fur onto the sunflower ground. We treat the sunflowers just like a cereal crop, so they'll get a pre margin spray and they get fertilizer um, to give them, give them a bit of a kick. So it worked last year. Made it to yard three, feels a field of barley, which you could do with a drink, to be honest. And the same on that side. Just needing water to wash in the fur, really. My taxi is here to take me home. Leave that forklift there so Kev can shift those bags into the fields via the spreader. Right, so let's get this blue machine. Got a field of rape to go and spray. There's the wee grey faggy. It'll be coming out in a couple of months' time for the sunflowers. Quick pit stop, fill up with the red stuff and the blue stuff. Just, just made it. Right to the brim. Actually, I don't want to spill it. Too damn expensive. Just cut my finger. Somehow managed to cut my finger on a wee bit of metal shavings in my boxers. I'm glad it was my finger. Here we go. 
First field. Well, I'm only doing one field today because that's the other field, right? You can see it's split half and half. The back side of the field got hammered by pigeons. This front end used to be fallow for a while, but we did some drainage and that's only the second year of crop, so it's quite fertile that bit. So it's kicked on compared to the rest. And then there's another field behind this field, which is much the same as that, patchy. Corker of a view though, bright yellow. Absolute belter of a field in here, really even, flowered really even as well. This is definitely the best field. That's middle-ish field, and the other field is middle to low. <laughs> In maybe a week's time when I get into the other two fields, I'll show you the bad bits. I'm not just going to show you all the best bits. I could do actually, I'll just, we'll just scrap all that. Everything looks like this. All our fields look perfect. So that's your main stem here. You can see all the pods coming on that. That's your wee individual pods. They'll end up about that size, two and a half, three inches maybe. And then you've got all the other stems coming off of the main stem and they'll start to grow pods as well. There you go, you can see a couple just come in there. Right, we're going to whack you up there. Last time I did this, you fell off in a field of barley. No issues, because the barley wasn't too too tall. I could find it, but here, I think you're stuffed if that falls off. We'll never see this footage again. Good luck. stop here to show you the field which is bad there you go a lot of bare patches through it mainly due to club root there was something like last year there was 60 percent of scottish soils had club root in it and it's going to be it's more this year i don't think there's actually statistics on it this year but last year they did they did analysis and it was about 60 percent 50 60 percent it's more this year we should have um, put soil samples away to get um, tests for a club root before we put the rape in, susceptible to club root. Um, we've done that for next year's rape fields, but we didn't do it for this year's, and that field got hammered by club root. Very annoying, especially this year. Rape's going to be a good crop to have. Um, the price of it's really good, um, and the input costs are relatively low. But nothing we can do about it now. At least we've got decent field here and a field back there where yes okay the flowering's behind but the crop's all there whereas that quite a lot of bare patches club root basically the root the big tap root that's meant to go down and just keep firing down the way it just goes down a wee bit then it makes a big big bulb on the end it stops and it grows and expands and then goes all mushy and pussy and then you end up with a really really rubbish root system and the plant just dies so that's what's happened to that field nailed by club root nailed Someone shifting cattle. You don't get much better spraying views than that, unless the sun was absolutely beaming. Kev's just away in the neighbouring field there, spreading fat on some barley. I think he's putting on about 120, 100, uh, it's either 100 kilo or 125 kilo per hectare of urea, 46% nitrogen. So we're putting on a fungicide just now, um, disease control for sclerotinia, Altern, alternia and boritis or botrytis, botrytis I think it's called. Sclerotinia is the, the main concern, I think. So it gets a split fungicide, so it'll get one now and then one kind of as it's starting to tail off from flowering. So now it's maybe at 70% flowering at the moment, it'll reach 100% and then it, when it starts to come back down again, uh, we'll do the opposite. Question, why do we want lots of bees to kicking about right now? Put it down below if you know why. Rape has big, big root system. It's actually quite hard. I don't think I'll be able to get much of it out. Oh, jeez, hold on. So that big tap root there, because the conditions have been good this year, been plenty moisture, nutrition's been there, the sunlight's been there, and it's been warm, it's not actually grown that much of a tap root. Whereas if there's not much moisture, um, the tap root will go a lot deeper to find the moisture. Anyway, we'll put that back in, that's probably worth a fiver. There you go. If you have a look in there, loads of wee black beasties. I think they're called 
cabbage stem weevil. They're not a flea beetle, they're a weevil. Job done, filled the rep complete. Um, that's the only field we're doing, so I'm gonna give it a rinse out, head up to yard number three, put on a roller and go and roll that field that just got drilled this morning with grass. It's needing a bit of a roll, but it's quite dry and hard, so I'll fill the roller up with plenty of water and then put some weight behind it. Here's the drill doing the grass. He's a bit over halfway now, so he's getting there. You can see the streaks where he's been and gone. See it going there. It says he's out in it quite a bit, to be honest. Covered in pollen. Subscribe. Go on, go and click subscribe. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a second. Subscribe. And like. Can I draw a thumbs up? That's not bad. Sprayers off. Go and chuck the roller on. It's a big hollow roller that you fill with water. Which, I don't know what you call it. Here it is. Hope it fits through the gates. Right, we'll leave this side to fill up. Right, we're just about there. Just about full. If I can get this out without soaking myself, I should probably turn it off first, that'd be a smart idea, but I don't come up with them too often. I'm going to make it through. Perfect. Like a glove. The drill's away now, so there's nothing in my way. You can see where I've done to already, it's doing a decent job to be fair. When they drilled it, they've drilled it all in that direction, obviously the end rigs, and then there's a few bits in that direction they've done along where there was a post line where it got a bit more poached up so they've put a bit more in that direction we'll see when we go past this streak here and see where he's, he's gone up and down there a couple of times same at this post line as well to even off a wee bit and fill in any bits tell you what i'm glad it's a dry day today don't fancy doing these steep bits on a slippy day camera doesn't show off we're getting there getting there slowly getting there i've not really shown you much because it's pretty boring work at least there's a good view a few people were questioning me feeding the calves oats, saying it'll just go right through them and out the back end, but calves can actually digest whole oats, whereas uh, kind of after their kind of five, six months of age, cattle can't then digest oats and break through the husk, whereas when they're young, they can. So that's why we feed oats to them, because they can break it down. And the oats are more um, easy going on the calves and barley can make them bloat and they can die if they eat too much barley overeating any any age of cattle if they're not used to a big diet of barley they can kill them so we start with oats we then mix that in with a wee bit of bruised barley to get them on the barley then we ease off on the oats and then they're onto the barley saying that so feeding barley straight off the bat isn't advised but it works fine if you get in early enough if the calves are quite a young age where they're not interested in actually getting a big belly full, they just nibble away at it and try it and they start that way, um, then it's fine to feed barley from an early age. But if they get a full big whack of barley when they're three, four or five months of age, they'll kill them. Ah, board stiff now. I'm getting there, it's not a big field, but the rollers, that size. I'm going fairly slow to make a decent job of it because there's only one field to do, so I'll just tick away. Yeah, I can see the other side. Spuds been getting planted in front of me. I'll show you. Over there, I don't know if you can make them out, there's a fair few tractors, isn't there? There's five tractors. I wonder if any of them are watching. Also, interesting one with the tractor. So, um, it went in the production line last week. And it's only meant to be 10 hours to build a fence, apparently. So on Friday, I messaged and I asked, any update on the tractors off the production line? It's now Monday evening, no word doesn't bode well. If it was off the production line, surely I'd have got a text pretty quick back. Yeah, yeah, all good. No response. Um, I say that because I know someone else who's bought a fence and they had, uh, it went in the production line, then it came off the production line and the status was pending parts or something like that. Rory, text me back with good news. It's on a lorry, it's inbound. I've taken this real tight. I hope the roller makes it. Normally it wouldn't be fussed, but it's a brand spanking fence. Oh, yeah, beauty, we've made it. Ah, jackpot. Done. Part this up, take it off. There's a chain that's lying out in the field, pick it up, and then I'll way home, get some tea. What do you call it, tea or dinner? Right, we're yoked off. This was my uh, pin, big old bolt. Did the job. I'm not sure whether they've realized they've not done this and that edge, the top wire along there. Um, to make sure, I've not paid the bill yet, so. Originally, I thought they'd just, they'd taken away the machines and come back in the morning and finish those wee bits because they didn't need any machines for that stuff. But, but it's been a few days now, so 
I must have forgotten. Other than that, all looks well. Should hold the cows in. Need to get electric sorted for the top wire though. Just keep them off it. Save them leaning against it. There's a lot of weight behind the cow when it wants to have a scratch of its chin. There's my chin. All right, that'll do it. Home time. Kev's been spreading fertilizer all day. He's also done the sunflower ground. Oh, should I have brought the discs back home with me? Oh, are they here? Where are the discs? Let's hope the discs are here. Oh, I don't see them. Oh, I see them. Yeah, beauty. I didn't mind the bales. Perfect, right. I'll be needing them tomorrow. Yeah, so sunflower ground. I'm going to disc it tomorrow. We don't have a drill that has a separate uh, fur hopper to put in fur and seed at the same time. So while Kev had the spreader on and it wasn't discs, do it anyway. That gets the fur under the ground a wee bit goes in quicker because the root system can get to it quicker it doesn't need to lay on the surface then dissolve through the surface into the ground and then get souped up it's in amongst the root system already pack this up and it's tea time that's why i say tea time not dinner anyway thank you very much for watching if you can subscribe click the thumbs up button helps the videos the reason i always say subscribe and like because youtube sees interactions as a base of that's a good video um, if it gets more interactions it means it's a better video they want to share it more because then they're trying to provide the best content possible to the viewers so that the viewers stay around and stick on youtube it makes them more money so if you like the video comment on the video subscribe it all helps cheers unless it's a tough video i guess don't bother <laughs>